good evening everybody welcome to raw online teaching program uh, today our topic of discussion is going to be an emergency related topic that is diabetic ketoacidosis diabetic ketoacidosis as you all know it is a most severe and acute complication of diabetes mellitus uh, previously this dka was believed to be uh, occurring only in type 1 diabetic patients but not so because of the uh, recent changes in the lifestyle modifications and also westernized food culture nowadays the obesity and type 2 diabetes also been increased in the pediatric population so the decay is uh, uh, seeming to be increasingly in type 2 diabetes also so what is the need why we have to diagnose the diabetic ketoacidosis it has a little higher mortality and morbidity rate in pediatric population so early identification and management is essential to limit the extent of the mortality and morbidity associated with this DKA. So moving on to diabetic ketoacidosis, by definition, the DKA is absolute or a relative insulin deficiency combined with the excess of counter-regulatory hormones such as glucagon, catecholamines, cortisol and growth hormone. So if you see 30 to 40 percent of newly diagnosed children with a type 1 diabetes, usually they present in ER setting only with the presence of DKA. So, the classic triad of uh, uh, biochemical parameter abnormalities which is observed in a DKA are hyperglycemia that is increased blood glucose and increase in ketone body formation that is increased acetones and increase of beta hydroxybutyrate and increased acetic acid and end up with metabolic acidosis. That is pH less than 7.3. So, this is the classic triad of abnormal biochemical parameters that is observed in a DKA. So, coming to the normal uh, physiology of uh, uh, this insulin and counter regulatory hormones, let us have a look on it. Basically, insulin is an anabolic hormone, whereas the counter regulatory hormones, which I said earlier, that is catecholamines, epinephrine, growth hormone, glucagol, all these are catabolic, that is counter regulatory hormones C or catabolic hormones and insulin is basically anabolic hormone that is the main functions of insulin are it mainly uses the glucose for the energy substrate and excess glucose is stored as a glycogen in the liver and fats are being stored as triglycerides and it uh, helps in the formation of proteins. So, these three are the major functions of the insulin hormone. On, on counterpart, the counter regulatory hormones like glucagon, growth hormone, uh, epinephrine are mainly involved in the process of breakdown of glucose, fats and proteins. So, mainly the catabolic hormones function is breaking down of glucose, proteins and fats. So, these things happen, the process is the glucose breaking down we call it as glycogenolysis and the proteins is proteolysis and fat is lipolysis. So when there is an imbalance between this anabolic and catabolic hormones that is uh, there is a relative lack of insulin and the hyperactivity or overactivity of the counter regulatory hormones uh, result in the DKA that is diabetic ketoacidosis. So what happens pathologically? Any precipitating factors might be any stress related trauma or infection factors uh, that will be the initial precipitating factor to uh, develop the diabetic ketoacidosis. So, when that occurs, there will be relatively insulin deficiency. In opposed to that, there is high growth hormone and cortisol level secretions. So, what happens? This insulin deficiency results in the breakdown of fats. So, as the fats are breakdown, more free fatty acids and ketone bodies are released into the circulation. So, that results in ketosis and acidosis. Uh, ketosis, if you see clinically, you will have a, a specific uh, fruity odor uh, in the ketotic patients and an acidosis usually they present with the a fast breathing that is rapid breathing, uh, specifically we call it as Rasmussen's breathing and uh, abdominal pain. They may present with clinically. So, this high growth hormone and cortisol level actions will be on the glycogen and amino acids basically. So, what they will do? The glycogenolysis occurs where the glucose is uh, like more gl glucose is breakdown and released into the circulation resulting in hyperglycemia. This hyperglycemia 
when it exceeds the uh, limit that is exceeds the threshold limit of absorption to over the renal uh, the excess glucose starts uh, releasing into the urine so it results in glycosuria so glycosuria in turn it causes osmotic diuresis and uh, more that is polyuria occurs it results in dehydration also the loss of electrolytes like sodium potassium and phosphate in urine so if you see this is the pathophysiology behind the diabetic ketoacidosis